title of today's class. It ain't going to be a long class. At least I don't think it is. It is actually called The Danger of Usury and Covetousness. The Danger of Usury and Covetousness. All right. All right. Oh, we got a sister trying to come in. Let in. All right. All right. So, but before we get to that, we're going to deal with deal with one other thing real 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 quick real quick because it's something that's going on that that happens oftentimes it comes and goes on and off it'll be like a a a certain period of time where it rises up in the same spirit it comes and it goes and then it'll go away for a little while and then it'll show itself again in another people show it then go away for a while and then it'll come back again and that's and that spirit is preeminence preeminence put that on the on uh, if you can put the definition of that for everybody right quick so we can see what that is. Let's see what preeminence means. All right. Mm-mm-mm. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Zoom in a little bit because I don't like all that stuff on the side. Yeah. Well, not for me. I mean, for that. Yeah. The actual screen itself. All right. You read that also. Preeminent. Having paramount rank, dignity or importance outstanding supreme all right so that that is preeminent or as the bible calls it preeminence when a person desires that all right when a person desires that go to sirach chapter 7 and verse uh 4 sirach chapter 7 verse 4 uh-huh seek not of the lord preeminence Neither of the king, the seat of honor. Read that again. Seek not of the Lord preeminence. Neither of the king, the seat of honor. So it says, seek not of the Lord preeminence. None of us should be in this truth just to get power. How you going to come into the truth and then you want power? You want position? You want it. You want to try to take it and do so in all unlawful manners. Get disrespectful with your leadership. Get disrespectful with the people that's over you in your office. Get disrespectful with the sisters that's 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 trying to help guide you in the different offices that the sisters are in. How do you all of a sudden want to come in a body full of believers? You know, as we say, we are full of believers and then want to just overthrow everybody to destroy the brotherhood and sisterhood that's been built in her. Read that again. Seek not of the Lord preeminence, Uh neither of the king, the seat of honor. It says, seek not of the Lord preeminence. So don't come in here asking God for power and position. It's not that's not how this goes, because the one the the one that got all the rank, the ones that got all the power, are the biggest servants. They got to take all the crazy phone calls. They got to take all the crazy backlash and backbiting and evil speaking. Don't nobody want that part, but everybody wants the the position, the seat. But no one wants what comes with it. That's why you can tell because whenever correction comes, no one likes it. Everybody sitting in their chair like this when they get corrected. Now they want to mug and look crazy when they're getting corrected. But as 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 you grow, as you come in the truth and you grow, grow and keep growing and you get different positions in the truth. And, and for the men, as you get rank, correction gets harder. It don't get no easier. So if you can't take it when you ain't got it, how in the world are you going to deal with it when you do? But that's because everybody just come in here and you see a position. I want power. I want to be in that seat. So you think you just going to take it unlawfully. And that ain't how that goes. All right. Go to uh, go to third John chapter one, verse nine. Where's the scripture that says we strive, strive lawfully that we must do it lawfully. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Look it up. Look it up. Somebody look it up. Somebody send it to me. Yes, that's what it says. All right, let's go to 3 John, though. 3 John, verse 9. You found it? Let's go. I want the 3 John, though, first. I want the 3 John first. All praises. All praises. Good deal. Uh, verse 9. 3 John, verse 9. I wrote unto the church, but diatrephes, who love to have the preeminence among them receiveth us not. And a lot of you don't understand that's exactly what you're doing. And you think that no one sees you. So this right here, this was a brother 
in the church a leader. So he was set up in his position by the apostles. He was put in his seat. Then he got the preeminence. Then he didn't even receive the apostles when they when they visited. Can you imagine that? But it happens in the truth the same way where if someone is given an order by leadership and then you wanting the preeminence the same way that David's son did him, Absalom, same way he did him, he would go and make people feel. Matter of fact, man, we got to read that. Well, we ain't going to read it. because That ain't a part of class. It's not a part of class. I just want to touch on it. Just want to touch on it. So you literally had. Like this, read the scripture again, because I'm going to go all the way in there. Go ahead. Come on. Third John, verse 9. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. And that's what happens whenever you go against leadership and you try to gain people to yourself. And you will do so even when it's sin. It shows you want preeminence because you're trying to win people over to you unlawfully. It shows when the body don't belong to none of us. The body belongs to Christ. So for you to want to be the head over Christ or take over in position in Christ's congregation, what you're saying is where Christ put you is not good enough for you because Christ set everybody in a position. Matter of fact, let's read. Go to Colossians 1 and 18. Colossians 1 and 18. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. Mm-hmm. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. We talking about Christ, firstborn from the dead. Go ahead. That in all things he might have the preeminence. That what? In all things who? He got the what? He might have the, the preeminence. So Christ has the preeminence. Christ do. Not you, not me. Christ do. And this is how you know. Let's go to us, uh, 1 Corinthians 12. And verse 18 now, 18. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18. Uh-huh. But now have God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it have pleased him. As it please who? Him. No, please you. Him. Please me. Him. Please the brother. Him. Please the sisters. Him. It please Christ. Please God. So all the position that everybody has been set up in, that did not come from men. God had that done. So whenever you think that you want to overthrow and put yourself in a position that you have not been given, that is not your role, you're going against God and you don't see it. And you don't understand that that will get you put outside the body. Because you're going to cause confusion. You're going to cause hatred. You're going to cause discord. All those different things will come from you. Because imagine, just imagine, imagine a brother, a brother come in, you give one of the soldiers an order. And then the soldier goes, because he, you see something wrong with a brother. Then, the, then he goes and tells the brother what you said. And then turn around and say, I don't agree with it. What he just did was turn that brother against the officer. And because he turned them against the officer, all those that agree with the officer, he's against them too. Now you got discord in the body. Now you got division. And you don't see it when it comes that way because you're doing it and you're evil. So the devil got a hold and you got the devil on you and you must repent. So that's why I wanted to go over that real, real briefly. That'll be another class another day when we dive into it. All right. So, I can't. It was another scripture I wanted to get. Yes, that's what I wanted. Let's get that. Second Timothy is what now? Second Timothy chapter two, verse five. Yes. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Except he do what? Strive lawfully. So except so, and if a man strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive. Lawfully, so we have to do everything we do according to the commandments. If you're in the role of sewing and you're a sister, that's your role. If you're in the kitchen, that's your role. If you're an officer over the IT team, that's your role. If you're over camp set up, that's your role. Not for you to go and tell everybody what to do, and when you get corrected in your office because you messed up, now the leader over the office got to get on you. 
That's their role is to make sure everything runs in order. You messed up. So therefore, take the correction. And then when the correction comes, be like, you know what? I did mess up. Instead of going and telling other people, I didn't really like that. I disagree. What you're doing is causing people to go against your leadership that is set up over you, regardless of what school you in. And a lot of you don't understand that that is what you're doing. All right. Oh, praise. All right. So we'll drop that. Now, let's go to the class. Use the danger of usury and covetousness. The danger of usury and covetousness. All right. So first, uh, let's go to let's go to Romans. Romans 15 and four. Real quick. Romans 15 and four. This is the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever thing were written up aforetime were written for our learning, uh -huh. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So everything was written for us to learn. We ought to learn from it. Not learn and then don't do anything about it or change the way we live in. We ought to learn from it and apply it. That's why this is spa. That's why Bishop had set up and put out the order that we should do classes throughout the week to go over basic laws. And we're discussing usury and covetousness today. So that way we will understand whenever we are, whenever we fall into those different things or get tempted by those things, we can identify them and then apply the scriptures to overcome that. All right. And we're going to know the dangers of doing so. All right. So let's go to Sirach. Sirach chapter uh, 21. Sirach 21 and verse 8. So this right here, we jumping straight off, straight off the ledge with it. Here we go. Sirach chapter 21, verse 8. He that buildeth his house with other men's money is like one that gathered himself stones for the tomb of his burial. Dang, read that again. He that buildeth his house with other men's money is like one that gather, gathereth himself stones for the tomb of his burial. Now, the reason why it says a man that will that get that takes another person's money to build up themselves, and it says that you might as well, you are literally gathering stone stones for your own tomb, that is because you're killing yourself. Imagine. Imagine you build your money and you build your budget around another man or another woman's money. Then when that woman or man moves away or gets away from you because now they branching out and they go do their own thing. Now, because you was building everything based off of what they was giving you or you was bringing in or getting from off the people. Now those people are gone from you. How are you then going to survive when you was living off of someone else's means? You're going to bury yourself. Literally. You're going to be up to you're going to be in crazy debt. Because the debt now that you done took on because you thought that money was going to always be there for you, you was going to continue to take advantage of people, now it's gone. So now that debt that you can't pay, now you under the house, now you on the street because you didn't, you, you sit up there and misled or mishandled God's people, now you got a bag with holes in it now. Now you got a bag with holes in it and it won't, and the most high ain't going to bless that. Or you'll have sisters that live with each other. Or brothers that live with each other, they'll move in together. They'll move in together. And when they move in together, one of them may not pay rent for the first couple of months because the other ones that they moved, the other single people that they moved in there with was looking out for them. So they understood that that person did not have the money at the time to really pay any bills. But everybody was like, look, we got you. And then, you know what I'm saying, then they get their job. And then when they get their job, they take it and say, well, that wasn't the agreement from the beginning because I didn't have any money to help pay no bills. Huh? You can't make that stuff up. You got to tell grown folk. Grown people. That when you were living with someone to help them. But. You know, that's that's, that's why the most I had the Bible reading, because I guess we we do need the guidance. Because mentally we are some we are some we are some Negroes. We we don't we ain't got it all. And we always take advantage of each other. You got a lot, not always, but you got a lot of people that come out of the world or getting used to taking advantage of people, and then they come in the truth and they have not dealt with that spirit. Have not dealt with that spirit. Uh read that scripture one more time. 
uh, Sirach chapter 21, verse 8. He that buildeth his house with other men's money is like one that gathereth himself stones for the tomb of his burial. For the tomb of his burial. You're killing yourself. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 11. Uh -huh. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. So it said, read that again. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. So the point out of that is what we want is neither deal falsely. Can you imagine somebody that, that, you, that you make an agreement with? Because usury... Matter of fact, let's put this. I'm sorry, we should have did that a long time ago. Why y'all ain't say nothing? Put a uh, usury definition up here right quick. Put usury up here. And then put covetous up there right after that. Put usury and covetous up there right after that. Yep, here we go. Ah, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, read both of those. Yes, sir. Well, usury. the first one. The first one's fine. The other one is for legal matters, which, which even the white man knows that. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Usury, the lending of money with an interest charge for its use, especially the lending of money at exuberant. Exuberant. Well, no, ex exorbitant. How do you say that word? Exorbitant. There we go. Exorbitant. All uh -huh. Black. All praise. Exorbitant interest rates. So pretty much you're expecting or taking from someone way more than what you should be. And in order for you to lend somebody some money, that means they have to make an agreement. So people will be like, well, the agreement was this. That's the exact definition of usury. Is that the person that you made the agreement with, you know the agreement is wop-sided. The only one that benefits from it is you. And that other person will be indebted to you forever. They can't get out of that. That's, that's what Esau do to us. Mm -hmm. That's what Esau do to us. With all the high interest rates and stuff on the houses and stuff, they had to create laws to try to stop that. And you know they're still doing it. But they had to create laws to at least on paper make it look good. Because we, people started pointing the stuff out because it was crazy. Then we come and our own people will do it to each other. Not understanding. Matter of fact, let's get, where is that in Hebrews? That if anybody be like Esau. That, it's dangerous. That's why this is this class, the dangers of usury. Yeah, six, uh, twelve, sixteen. Hebrews. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, yeah, read that real quick. Hold he on, I might want to go back up. Read fifteen. No, 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 no. Fourteen. Here we go. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter twelve, verse fourteen. Follow peace with all men and holiness. It said, "Follow peace with all men." You ain't even at peace with your own brother when you do that to him. You ain't peace with your own. You ain't at peace with your own sister when you taking advantage and putting your foot on their neck just like Esau would. Go ahead. In holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Uh huh. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. It said, "Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God." You can fail in this truth. We don't, it's not guaranteed we get the kingdom just because we walked in the doors. We have to apply what we're reading. We have to apply what we're learning. That's why this is called spa. We have to apply these things. So you can fail. You can get it wrong. And if you don't fix it, you can fail. And that be it for you. Go ahead. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. Uh -huh. And thereby many be defiled. And a lot of people have become bitter because... You can destroy someone's spirit by taking advantage of them. You can destroy their spirit to where now they got bitterness within them because of what you did. And then when you get corrected, you can form bitterness because now you getting corrected, caught. You know how they say, you know what I'm saying? Everything was all good till you got caught. And people and then you grow and then you get out of the spirit. Go ahead. Lest there be any fornicator. Lest there be any fornicator. Or profane person. Or for a profane person. Like, let's look up profane. I ain't asked for that, but I want to see what it means. What profane mean? Lest there be any profane person. See what that looks like. Let's see what that scripture is. Uh-huh. 
Let's uh Yeah, read that. Profane to treat something sacred with abuse. Go ahead. Irreverence. Irreverence uh-huh. or contempt. So you it says to treat something sacred with abuse. Aren't we the children of Israel? So we the sacred people of God? And then That's you go out right. here and you mistreat God's people? Read that verse again. Lest there what? Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. A person that is profane, that mistreats God's people. Go ahead. As Esau. Just like Esau does. Go ahead. Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Uh huh. For ye know how that afterward. When he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. So we can get rejected because we got the blessing of the kingdom. And we can be rejected. You can fail at the grace of God. Go ahead. For he found no place of repentance, Uh though he sought it carefully with tears. And that right there is scary. That is scary. Because we can miss out on the kingdom by mistreating each other like that. We, 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 we are being compared to Esau when we treat each other like that. You can't make this stuff up. Where was we at? Leviticus? Yes, sir. Hold on, let me get it. Let's go back there. Let's read that again. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 11. Yeah. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. And you got to think about it. It says, ye shall not steal... Because you're robbing the person. You literally sitting up for extort you you ex, like performing extortion on the person, taking everything from them. Then it said, neither deal falsely. You're dealing falsely already. Then it says, lie and neither lie one to another, like you ain't got a clue of what in the world you doing. But we'll give you the benefit out of the doubt for today. But you won't be able to say that Lord's will moving forward. So if you are clueless, Lord's willing, it's not the case after today. All right? It's my trying to go know where they want. All right. Now, let's go to Psalms 15. Yeah, Psalms 15, and we're going to read the whole verse, the whole chapter. Yes, sir. Hold on. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. All right. Go ahead. Psalm chapter 15. Lord. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? So this is a question. This is a question. This is a this is what David is asking the Lord. He said, listen, he's asking a rhetorical question. Who shall abide in the Lord's tabernacle? Who going to get the kingdom? That's what he's asking. Who going to get the kingdom? Let's see. Go ahead. He that walketh uprightly Uh and worketh righteousness Mm -hmm. and speaketh the truth in his heart. So we got to walk uprightly. And speak the truth in our hearts. Go ahead, in our minds. Go ahead. He that back. Matter of fact, let's get the heart. Let's get the heart. Let's cause so that way, because we know we got new people on the call. Uh, let's get that. Let's get the heart in Mark. Mark 7 21. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Which we finna touch. Darn, read it. Yeah. For from with <laughs> for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. Go ahead. Adulteries. Adultery starts in the mind. Fornication. Fornication starts in the mind. Murders. Murders start in the mind. Thefts. De- uh, robbery starts in the mind. Covetousness. Covetousness. You wanting something that don't belong to you starts in the mind. Wickedness. Wickedness all in your head. Deceit. Deceit. Because that's what usury is. It's deceit. Go ahead. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. All the crazy sexual stuff, y'all. Hey, our people get caught up in. You got the darn pornography. You got anime. Like, like, can you, like, you got to think about this. You got to think about this. Some sisters and brothers are watching pornography, and I'm going to stop right here for a second. I'm going to hold right here for a second. So you have sisters and brothers that are watching pornography. Then it gets crazy to the point where it's already crazy, but then it's like now you're watching cartoons. Christ Jesus. You you will never touch a cartoon. Ever. You'll never touch a cartoon. Then you get them, then it goes to now you're watching kids. Or you're watching men on men. 
or women on women now. That's what this scripture says. All that stuff starts in the mind. Go ahead. An evil eye. An evil eye. Envy, hatred towards your brother and towards your sister. That starts in the mind. Go ahead. And that's because you think they got something that you want or, or whatnot. All of that stuff calls hatred, calls envy. Go ahead. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Go ahead. Pride. Your pride where you won't even ask for help. You won't even ask for help or you won't receive the correction. You'll be like, they don't know what they're talking about. And you'll sit there in your sin and never accept what in the world you did wrong. Your pride will get you destroyed. Go ahead. Foolishness. Foolishness. Uh-huh. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. So all of these things come out of us and defile us. And they start in the mind, which is your heart. Let's go back to Psalms chapter 15 and verse 1 again. Yes, well, sir. verse 2. Start at verse 2 now. Psalms chapter 15, verse 2. Uh -huh. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Uh -huh. He that backbiteth not with his tongue. So these are the people that get in the kingdom of heaven. He that backbiteth not. So you ain't going to talk against brothers and sisters when they're not around. You're not going to slander brothers and sisters when they're not around. You, you, if there's something that, that you got to correct them, you'll correct them while they're standing there versus waiting until they leave. Doing the, uh, the, the, <laughs> never mind, doing the Friday skit. I'll be talking again when they leave. You scared when they show up, but then when they leave, now you talking now. And the, and the crazy thing is that the people that listen to you, freaking ridiculous. Go ahead. Nor doeth evil to his neighbor. Nor doeth evil to your neighbor. Go ahead. Nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. Go ahead. And whose eyes a vile person is contemned. Uh-huh. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. So you got to remember the thought. The question is who gets to stand and dwell in the holy hill? In thy tabernacle. That's the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. He that sweareth to his own hurt uh -huh. and changeth not. So sweareth to his own hurt and change not. You got morals. You got cold. Certain things you just ain't going to, you ain't moving. You're going to stand on your square and that's it. And it should be the laws. I'm going to keep the commandments, period. Regardless of what your family say, regardless of what the brothers next to you say, regardless of what the sister next to you say, you will not move. These are the people that get the kingdom. Go ahead. He that putteth not out his money to usury. He that what? He that putteth not out. Out his money to usury. Read on. Nor taketh reward against the innocent. Because whenever you perform it, whenever you take your brothers and sisters for usury, you're taking advantage of the innocent person. It says if you don't do that, you get the kingdom. If you don't do it, go ahead. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. That's who get the kingdom. So the opposite is if you are performing, like taking usury of your brothers and sisters. You don't get the kingdom if you don't stop. And a lot of times brothers and sisters will say, well, I said this, I said that. Well, we talked about this, we talked about that. Where's the action at then? Like if you're still performing it, it don't mean nothing. I don't understand that. It's an action. It took an action for you to put it in play. It take an action for you to stop it and fix it. It don't just take words to do that. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Matter of fact, let's get that. Samuels. Talk no more exceeding proudly. First Samuels. This is the book of First Samuel, chapter 2, verse 3. Yep. 
Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Uh -huh. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. So it ain't what you say. It's what you do. Well, I told the sister, you know what I'm saying? She got to get her stuff together. Sister's having conversations. Well, I told her this, this, and that. Well, where's, where's the action of the actual fixing of taking advantage of the sister? How do you fix it? Give it back. Give them what you owe them. Regardless if you made an agreement, because that is the exact definition of usury. You knew the agreement was wrong in the first place, but you didn't fix it. All right. Uh, let's go to let's go to uh, let's go. Matter of fact, we're going to read. Let's go to Ezra chapter seven. We're going to read about the agreement that to prove that you will make an agreement. So even if there is an agreement and things like that, that does not mean that it is not usury. All right. So Ezra chapter seven. Got a lot of reading. Got a lot of reading. Uh, matter of fact, we are going to jump down. Dun, 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 dun. Mm. Dang, that's a good little bit. I don't want to read the whole thing. I don't want to read the whole thing. Is it seven or six? Where is it at? Six? God dang it. Let me see. Right. All praises to the Most High. Pray you brothers and sisters are gleaning something from what Officer Aton is going over. All praises to the Most High. He's set up to show us our, our rights so that we can correct them. You ready, Officer? All praise. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> All praises. All right. All right. Uh, go to, go to, go to. Uh, it's it's actually, instead of, instead of Ezra says, Nehemiah 5 and 7. That's what it is. That's where I want to go. Uh, but I might want to start. Mm, yeah, yeah. Start at one. We're going to read the whole thing. Yeah, start at one. Good little bit. Nehemiah chapter five, verse one. Uh -huh. And there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren, the Jews. It was a great cry of the people and of their wives. And it says against their brethren, the Jews. So here is look, family doing this against family. Israelites doing this against Israelites. Let's see what they was crying about. Go ahead. For there were that said, we, our sons and our daughters are many. Therefore, we take up corn for them that we may eat and live. Uh -huh. Some also there were that said, we have mortgaged our, our lands, mm -hmm. vineyards and houses that we might buy corn because of the dearth. So because of the because of the dirt, because of lack of food and things like that. They were selling like their crops, their corn, well, no, not corn, but giving away everything they could just so they can eat. And it said in verse three, it said some also there were that said we have mortgaged our lands. So they put their lands up as collateral so they can get food to feed themselves and their family. And you had the Jews, the leaders of the Israelites doing this to our own people. Go ahead. Now, now, in order for you to mortgage your land, what you got to have? A contract. So there was an agreement that was signed there, but the people out of desperation signed it, had to agree to that. They had to because they were trying to eat. And can you imagine you give away your car as collateral for food? And then when you run out of food, you still ain't got enough. So now you, you give away your other car. Now you give away your house. Now you give away your lands so you can eat. That's what was going on. They was going back multiple times because they was trying to eat. Go ahead. There were also that said, we have borrowed money for, for, the, for the king's tribute and that upon our lands and vineyards. Go ahead. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children uh -huh. and as our children as their children. So we are slaves now. We are slaves to our own brothers because now we don't have nothing. We sold ourselves to them and our kids. Go ahead. 
And lo, we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants. Go ahead. And some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. Read. Neither is it in our power to redeem them. They couldn't redeem them because they ain't got the money to buy them to set them free. Just like the law back in Deuteronomy is talking about. Where you can go and redeem them. You can pay what they owe and redeem them. They couldn't go and redeem their own family. Because of the usury that was taking place. And it's going to call it that. Go ahead. For other men have our lands and vineyards. And I was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. So this is this right say. So he was crying. So when Nehemiah heard these things, he was upset when he heard these words on how they was being treated. Go ahead. Then I consulted with myself. And I rebuked the nobles. So he rebuked the nobles. He rebuked the leaders. So if you, you sisters that think you're high and mighty, you ain't a leader in her. But you brothers that got rank and you taking advantage of brothers that don't got rank or even brothers that do got rank. He said he rebuked them. And that's exactly what this class is. This is a correction for all of us. Because if we don't fix it, and this stuff comes up again, and we find out some people is, is taking usury of people up in here, you got to go. Go ahead. And I rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said unto them, ye exact usury, every one of his brother. Uh -huh. And I set a great assembly against them. So now, it's called, so now you know it was called usury. Those people made agreements to give away all that stuff for food. And the nobles, the leaders built themselves up off the other people's stuff, took all their lands, and they calling. Imagine them calling themselves rich when everything they took was all, they just took usury of everybody. The only reason they can afford the lands they got is because they took it from the people that gave it to them. They didn't work hard for that. They didn't earn that. That's why it says you, you got the stones for your own, your own grave. Go ahead. And I said unto them, we, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, Go ahead. which were sold unto the heathen. Read. And will ye even sell your brethren? So the same way our brothers be getting sold to the heathen, y'all going to do that to each other? That's what he's asking. You going to do that to one another the same way the heathen treat us? That's why I said if any man be like Esau, because didn't he sell us? Sold us all over the place. Took usury of us. They still do it today with all the loans and everything. And here we are doing it to one another. Go ahead. Or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. And these men, the leaders, they could not say nothing because they understood what was being said was the truth. They knew that's what they was doing. That's why they didn't have nothing to say. They knew that from the beginning. That's what they was doing. Go ahead. Verse 9. Also I said, is it not good that ye do? Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God? Because you, you're showing that you don't fear God whenever you take advantage of one another like that. And it shows that you got a spirit of covetousness on you because you're willing to take from other people to get the things that you want. You will take the money from them so you can buy what you want. Or you will take what they have that they put up for collateral. You wanted it yourself the whole time. So you made the agreement outrageous to where they cannot keep what they put up for collateral. Go ahead. Because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies, I likewise and my brethren and my servants, my exact of them money and corn, I pray you. Let you leave us, leave off this usury. Give it back. Give it back. Go ahead. Restore, I pray you, to them even this day. So this is what they was told to do. Restore. Go ahead. What they had to restore. Their lands. The lands. Their vineyards. Their vineyards. Their olive yards. Olive yards. And their houses. So this is multiple things. Over and over they had to keep coming back. Because they didn't have enough because our brothers was already taken from the people. And they made the agreement outrageous where they could not keep what they put up to get the food. And they took full advantage of it and made themselves fat, made themselves rich off of them. Go ahead. 
also the hundredth part of the money and of the corn, the wine, and the oil that ye exact of them. Go ahead. Then said they, we will restore them and will require nothing of them. That's repentance. They showed repentance. And that's the opportunity that all of us have. Whenever we find out that we are in the midst of sin, we can show repentance by fixing it. And what they did, they read that again. Then said they, uh -huh. we will restore them and will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. Uh -huh. Then I called the priest and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. According to this promise. So now read the next verse. Verse 13. Also, I shook my lap and said, so God shake out every man from his house. So he's saying, look, this right here, I shook my lap. This right here, hey, this right here is the promise. Go ahead. And from his labor that performeth not this promise. So everybody that does not restore, everybody back they stuff, they land, they vineyards, they houses, if you do, and the tenth of their money, if you do not give it back, go ahead. Even thus he be shaken out and emptied. You gonna be shaken out and emptied. The Lord gonna jack you up. Go ahead. And all the congregation said, Amen. And they agreed. Go ahead. And praise the Lord. And the people did according to this promise. And the people did according to this promise. So even though you made an agreement with your sister or with your brother, you knew it was wopsided. Just like our forefathers knew it was wopsided. They knew the only one to benefit was going to be them and they was going to get fat off of it and everybody else was going to get poor from it. it. Had to take Nehemiah and them to come in there and check everybody. And then they understood what they did and then they fixed it. And that's what all of us have an opportunity to do. We all have an opportunity to fix that. Every single one of us. All right. Let's go to uh, Exodus Exodus uh, 18.21. Matter of fact, hold on. I might want to go to 22. Might want to go to 22. Give me a second. Let me check it out right quick. Mm. Yeah, read Exodus 23 and 25. Or read the law. Exodus 22 and 25. I'm sorry. 22 and 25. My bad. Exodus chapter 22, verse 25. If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as an usurer. Mm -hmm. Neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. So it says that we should not treat our people with usury. We should not require them to pay us way more than what they should when they asked us for help. Ain't no way somebody should be paying more on your bills than than you. Can you imagine somebody coming and stay in your house and you're supposed to help them? And then the money that you ask them for, because they don't know any better, they give you way more than what you ever pay and they never know what you pay. But you're supposed to help them. We got sisters doing this to each other. Brothers, too. All over the congregations, from what I've been told, this is happening in multiple places. That's why I decided to do a class on it. It's because it's not just in one location. This stuff is happening in multiple locations to multiple people. And some people it's come out and some people they haven't. And those things, that's why, that's why these classes are very important because these are the laws that we must apply. All the deep stuff that we get the deep breakdowns that the bishop and them give us and the deacons give us, those are beautiful breakdowns. And then they come back behind that all the time and give us laws. And we forget those things that they tell us. They, we forget those. But all the brothers, you even got sisters precepts, sisters now, you know, sisters that think they know precepts, the ones that you got to watch the most. They know all the deep, they try to know the deep breakdowns like the men. <laughs> Hell no. And then turn around. And won't apply the scriptures. Won't preeminence now. They feel like they can go to the street with you. <laughs> feel, feel like they can just take it. Look, they can sit up at the table. They can run the school better than the men can. That's how they feel. Then they name themselves Deborah. Not understanding that at all. 
can't make this stuff up. Like I said, you have the bishop, them, they'll give us the basics, and then they'll come behind it and then give us something, something a little deeper for us. And we only act like we remember the deep part. We forgot everything else they said. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not be a usurer against your brother. We'll forget those. But all of the deep stuff, brother's Bible's marked up to death. <laughs> marked up to death. You ask them what the heck is usury, no one can tell you. Now all of a sudden, everybody, uh, 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 no one knows. And then when you tell them, then they, well, I didn't know that's what I was doing. But you know the deep breakdown. How do you not know that when you did that to that person? But that's all right. Get the benefit of the doubt. The Lord's will, <laughs> we repent. Read that again. Read that again. Exodus chapter 22, verse 25. If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as a usurer. Thou shalt not be to him as a usurer. All right, go to Deuteronomy 23, 19. Deuteronomy 23, 19. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not lend unto the usury to thy brother. Mm hmm I'm sorry, let me read that read, properly. Read that again. Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. Uh -huh. Usury of money, usury of, of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. So anything that is lent upon usury. Go ahead. Unto a stranger, thou mayest lend upon usury. So you're going to treat your brother like you would treat the other nations? You don't find that suspicious? You literally treat you whenever you do that, you treat your brother like you would treat like you're supposed to treat the other nation. Then mess around Esau and them may lean them come and ask you for something. Then everybody just give me back what you owe me. Yeah, don't worry about it. Huh? <laughs> you can't make now. Look, don't worry about paying me back. You, my brother, I need it all plus some. That's how we be doing each other, man. Unbelievable. Go ahead. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, uh -huh. but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to in the land, mm -hmm. whether thou goest to possess it. So we are not to mistreat our brothers that way. All right? That is not how we are supposed to do. We're not to be, we're not to be treating our brothers like they are, like they heathens out here. That don't make no sense. You got brothers and stuff. We we in the truth together, striving for the same thing, struggling together. And then you go and take advantage of a brother because of that covetous spirit. And it is covetous because you obviously are people you whenever you perform that you want something. You want something from that brother or sister that you're doing that to. And then you start to look at other things and now you need more. So instead of you lessening what they or, or fixing it you'll continue to prolong it because you're trying to get everything you can up out of them unbelievable unbelievable all right so that's the usury i think we're good on usury now let's go to covetous now all right let's go to uh exodus 18 21 matter of fact no what was the other one i told you to get exodus what uh, was that was it all right let's go there let's go there let's go there all praise Oh, my bad. Exodus uh, 18, 21. <laughs> Exodus chapter. Oh, you want the definition first? Yes. I thought, yeah, let's get covetous real quick. Let's get covetous. Like the scriptures say, thou shall not covet. The reason why that is there is because with covetousness, you will do everything else to your brother. You will commit usury against your brother if you got covetousness because you want to buy something that you ain't got. And you're trying to chase to keep up with the Joneses. Or you're trying to use somebody else's money to get it because you may not want to spend your money or you ain't got it and you're living above your means. So you're going to make that person pay for it instead of doing it the right way and being honest about it. Go ahead. Covetous. Marked by an ordinate desire for wealth or possessions or for another's possessions. Read that again. Because some people think covetous is just that you want something that belongs to someone else. Nah, sometimes you want something that you can't afford, that you shouldn't be stretching yourself thin. So what you will do, you'll have a shirt 
that you pay five dollars for and then you will turn around and sell the shirt for a hundred read that again covetous marked by inordinate desire for wealth in order for wealth so because this ain't talking this, this could be someone else's wealth or your own but either way you want the wealth it ain't got to be something that they got you just know that they got money then you want it so you can go and do whatever you want to do with it go ahead or possessions because that's what you want to do you want to buy stuff you may want to buy a brand new car well, you know good and well that if it was just you and you wasn't taking advantage of that person, you wouldn't be able to afford that new car. So what you do, you keep taking advantage of other people so you can get that new car and make different agreements. And then when you question, I don't know. Not understanding that it's usury just because you made an agreement, you wasn't honest with the sister or you wasn't honest with the brother does not mean it's not usury just because they agreed to it. Because sometimes brothers and sisters are ignorant to what they're agreeing to. Some brothers and sisters don't know certain things. They ain't been around the block. They haven't been outside off the porch on their own. So they don't know what it will cost to do it on their own. So they assume that what you say is cool. So then they trust you with it and rock with it. And then you take advantage of them. Is that it on that verse? Uh, it's, it's a little bit less. Uh, Read it. Definition Exodus 18 now. <laughs> Exodus chapter 18, verse 21. Uh -huh. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. So this right here is what Moses was told to do. This is why it is very dangerous to have a covetous spirit because you will then, you, will, you could fall to having usury against your brother because Think about it. You had Jethro, right? Moses' father-in-law, telling him to find able men. Right? Go ahead. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God. So they must fear God. Men of truth. They must be true. Hating covetousness. They cannot have a covetous spirit. Why is that? Because you will take advantage of the body. You will take everything from them. You only look at them as to how much can you make. So therefore, you'll 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 have different you'll you'll price everything super high as to what you do, or or you'll simply make agreements with brothers and sisters and take from them, and they don't benefit from it at all. While you get rich from it, you get fat off of it. That's why this right here, this scripture says, take. It says the men that you should pick, the men that should be leaders. So if you are a leader and you do this to people, you don't deserve that seat is what this is saying. That seat is it for you. Because you are going to destroy brothers and sisters souls doing that. Read it from the top again. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness. And place such over them to be rulers of thousands. Because you have to be rulers of thousands. You can't have a covetous spirit. If you got a covetous spirit, you'll mess around and sleep with somebody else's wife. You got a covetous spirit, you'll take everybody else's money and use it for yourself. Shoot, you'll have people come to the congregation. You'll put the money in your pocket instead of putting the money where it's supposed to be. Instead of making sure the arms get to the school, you'll take it as your personal collection. And then when you do something for the school, you will make it like you doing something so grand. When all you did was take the money that everybody else trusted you with and you claimed it as your own. So as your, you know, the body needs this, this and that for you to be seen, you want to give toward that and you let everybody know and everybody else thinking they don't, you know, they don't put in for it. But you don't nobody knows they put in for it. they thinking they don't even give alms. Because you decided to take it yourself. So you can be puffed up. So you could be set up as a leader. When right here in this scripture, you do not deserve that seat. That is not the kind of leader that was that that's supposed to be set up. So if you have a covetous spirit, it's like it says right here. Choose those that don't got that spirit. So if you have that spirit, you need to repent from it. You need to stop. You need to fix it. 
Is that it on that verse? No, sir. Go ahead. And rulers of hundreds. Uh huh. Rulers of fifties. And rulers of tens. And rulers of tens. All right. Now let's go to uh, Proverbs twenty-eight. That's all I wanted on that. Proverbs twenty-eight and sixteen. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 16. The prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor. So it said that wanteth understanding. Go ahead. Let's see. Let's see what this is really talking about. Go ahead. But he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. So the opposite of this, this right here when it says the prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor. So the one that like that ha that lacks understanding is a great oppressor. That's what that wanted mean. So if you're a ruler or a leader and you lack understanding, you will be a great oppressor to your people. But then it, in, in, your, in your reign, in leadership or as a leader will be very, very short because the opposite says, but, read the next part, but he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. But if you hate covetousness you will prolong your days you will rule for a long time you will be a leader and respected for a long time that is because you are not going to take advantage of people so people can trust you people understand you have their best interest at heart when you counsel in them people understand that you're trying to look out for them so therefore the people will see you as a leader you ain't going to take the preeminence and make yourself a leader because to have covetousness, you will have preeminence for that spot, too. So you will do whatever you can to set yourself up. If you got covetous for power, that's what you'll do. You got covetous for money and things and wealth and all of that, you will take advantage of the people to get it. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. No, we. No, Leviticus 19, 11. We read that yet? Yes, sir, we read. We did? All right, all praises. Uh, Hebrews 13, 5. Hebrews 13, 5. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 5. Uh -huh. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Let your conversation be without covetousness. So, you know, whenever, you know, a lot of people will read this and just say, you know, we're not talking about covetous, covetousness. Sometimes, what if you're giving counsel to somebody and you're trying to put little bugs in their ear? Because you're trying to manipulate them for later on because you want something. So your conversation is with covetousness. This says let it not be that way. It ain't just because you have one conversation. Well, we didn't talk about things. We were just saying X, Y, Z. But then sometimes it's very subtle. You know exactly what you're doing. So you know what? You know, we can move in together. You know what I'm saying? We can move in together. We move in together. You know you know what I'm saying? Ain't no big deal. And, uh, you know what I mean? I'll fill out all the paperwork and stuff like that, and then you just come, and then we'll make an agreement. You you done got the uh, uh the apartment for, for like, you know what I'm saying? What a good price. Let's, let's keep it keep it simple for, for me. For, like, $1,000 for rent. Let's say you got that for $1,000 for rent, right? So... Now you go and turn around. Now it's three of y'all in there. If you do, you do that three different ways, at 333, 333. But then you'll turn around and won't let them see the lease, the agreement. Then you will charge them 600 apiece. And they'll agree to it because they trust you. Now, those of you that get taken advantage of like that, you should always Prepare yourself. You should always ask the question, well, what's the total? What are we paying? What's going on? Get the full breakdown. But I ain't talking about y'all because sometimes, you know, brothers and sisters, they really do things and they believe that it's out of the kindness of their heart. So they don't hold those things and they trust people, stuff like that. But don't be fools about it. Because everybody ain't right. It's the same thing when it comes to brothers wanting to be with sisters. All the sisters ain't right. Just like sisters want to be with the brother, all the brothers ain't right. So whenever you're dealing with one another and you're dealing with different things like getting, living together and things like that, it's nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to deter you from doing it, but make sure those of you, y'all are in it together and y'all are splitting things equally so that it is not that you're taking advantage of each other and making agreements and you got one being taken advantage of you and one in the midst of usury and then act like 
all that's okay because everybody agreed to it. So that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't deal with each other like that. Just be smart and be fair. Do what the Bible say. Be equal. Don't take more from your brothers and sisters. Don't do that. They'll be stuck while you sitting up here stacking. Now you finna go buy a house. They can't save a dime. And they like, why in the world I can't save nothing? And they got the same kind of job I got. They're not understanding you done took from them for a whole 12 months on the lease. Unbelievable. All right. Let's see where we at. Uh, let's go to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 and 3. We almost done. You want to finish that? Oh, yeah. Finish that. My bad. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as ye have. And be content. Be content with such things you have. Be content. If you're content, it ain't telling you, you know what I'm saying, look, don't don't go and get better things, but you're to do so lawfully. Not to take advantage of other people to get it. If you need to go and get another skill or a different job that pays more, you go get the job. Don't take from the people to get it. That's just like what Christian pastors be doing. What's the difference? Go ahead. For he have said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Oh, praises. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yep. All right, let's go to Ephesians 5. That's all I want on that. I was going to go somewhere else, but I'm good. Instead of stretch, stretches out some more. Ephesians 5 and five. Uh, 3. Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. Uh, matter of fact, jump up, jump up. Let's read one. We're going to start at 1. Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore followers of God as their children, and walk in love as Christ also have loved us, mm -hmm. and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling so it So it told us to be followers of God as their children. And then it gives us an example. We're supposed to be like Christ. Christ didn't take nothing from nobody. He didn't take advantage of the people. He was trying to provide and help the people. But instead, we got people that will take advantage of each other and then say, I love God. I love my brothers and my sisters. Go ahead. <laughs> but fornication and all uncleanness uh -huh. or covetousness. Or covetousness. Go ahead. Let it not be once named among you. And becometh as, saints. As becometh. As becometh saints. As becometh saints. So the actions of the saints is not to be in the midst of covetousness. So for us to call ourselves, we the saints of God. But then we in the midst of covetousness. So we acting like a heathen. We acting like the other nations. Go ahead. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, uh -huh. which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Read. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, uh -huh. nor covetous man, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance to the kingdom of Christ and of God. That is what happens whenever you have that spirit and don't fix it. You don't get the kingdom. So the same way you in the midst of usury, you don't get the kingdom. If you in the midst of the different things we just read and don't fix it, we don't get the kingdom with those neither. So we got to fix that. So you can't have covetousness and, and then taking advantage of the people thinking you straight. You can't do that. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 8 and 10. Lord's willing, Lord's willing, y'all are gleaning something from the class, man. Lord's willing. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 10. Therefore will I give, give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. Wait, wait. So the Most High is, <laughs> the Most High is telling us as a judgment, because Israel, we refused to repent. We refused to repent. So what did he say he would do? Read it again. Therefore will I give their wives unto others uh -huh. and their fields to them that shall inherit them. Read. For every one from the least, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness. Go ahead. From the prophet, even to the priest, every one dealeth falsely. Every last one of us was dealing falsely. 
go to Deuteronomy 28, 15. Because that's what we just read. Jeremiah sounds just like Deuteronomy 28. So whenever we read about us coming over here in slavery, one of the reasons we came, or two of them, is because we was taking advantage of each other with usury because of covetousness. Now we over here, now we got to serve our enemies because we got that spirit amongst us. Because it's something that we got to fix while we in this captivity. Instead, we'll take, Keith, you know how, you know how in the hood, Everybody that rob each other stay in, a na in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Now we doing it in the congregations now. We all struggling in the, the same way. And now we want to rob from each other now, even in the congregation where we know the laws, supposedly. That's what we say. We know the laws. Deuteronomy 28, 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So he was given the warning from Moses. When then when you read it in Jeremiah, God said it got to happen. He had already done it multiple times, but he said it got to happen. I'm going to get a wives to other people. Let's read verse 30. Let's see if we was given the warning way before Jeremiah. Go ahead. Verse 30, thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. So our wives will be given to other men. They're going to rape them and take them from us. Then the, the, the houses that we build, we wouldn't live in them. That's why we in the hoods and ghettos now. Go ahead. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. And that's exactly what has happened. We were warned. And now we're living what God said in Deuteronomy 28 and what we just read in Jeremiah. He, we, he said it to us multiple times. But because we're hard headed, we keep getting the same judgment over and over. But this is it. If you don't fix it this time, ain't no kingdom for you. It's bombs for you. That's it. That's all you're going to get. You're going to burn forever. And we're going to watch you as we dance to the, to the feast days and all that good stuff, like it's saying in Isaiah 66. That's what's going to happen. But we got to get rid of that covetous and usury spirit that's within us. Because the reason why you would take advantage of somebody and commit usury is because you have a covetous spirit. All right. Uh, see anything else? Yeah. Please ask these. Sirach, Sirach, Sirach. 14.9, I think. I think that would be that'd be all. Sirach 14, 9. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 14, verse 9. Mm -hmm. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion, and the iniquity of the wicked dries up his soul. Uh -huh. A wicked eye... No, nope, read that again. I'm sorry. Well, read that again. One more time. Yes, sir. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion, and the iniquity of the wicked dried up his soul. So it said a covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. That's why we are to be content, satisfied with our portion. But whenever you're covetous, you're showing you're not satisfied with your portion. If you're not satisfied, then do the hard work or take the steps to improve your situation on your own. Not taking advantage of the people to do so. That's not how you go about doing that. Also, keeping the commandments. Do that with strive lawfully. Keep the commandments and improve yourself. No one's telling you not to improve your skills, improve your education, improve different things to where you can get different jobs or start your own company. No one's telling you not to do that. But what the scriptures is saying, do not take advantage of your brothers and sisters to do it. That's not what that is. So. Uh, I think that's all I want. So now let's go to, yeah, let's go to Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews. We'll end it there. We'll end it there. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Like ending off of this because it reminds me as well. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. So that's what we should be doing. We should take earnest heed to the scriptures. 
and that way and meditate on those things and that we do not allow those things to slip because when we do we then put ourselves in harm's way to miss out on the kingdom one more scripture uh sirach 40 sirach 40 and and 28 because a lot of times we read this scripture and we read it another way around uh just thinking about it while we're sitting here this is the book of sirach chapter 40 verse 28 uh -huh. my son lead not a beggar's life uh -huh. and better is it Four. It is to Four. die. For better. For better. For better it is to die than to beg. So don't live a beggar's life. Now, why did I read this? Read the next part. Read the next verse. Verse 29. The life of him that depended on another man's table is not to be counted for a life. So if you're depending on other people to take care of you, this, especially you men, if you're requiring other men to take care of you, when you have the means or you go out here and you want to commit usury against them because of your coverages, this is what you're doing. It says your life is dependent on another man's money. Your table depends on what he bring in. So therefore, it is telling you don't even count your life as a life. Message. Read on. For he polluted himself with other men's meat. So because you have covered a covetous spirit and will commit usury against your brothers and sisters, it says you pollute yourself with other men's meat. You think you're doing something good and you are polluting yourself. Go ahead. But, but a wise man, well nurtured, will beware thereof. But if you are wise and you repent, show that wisdom and repent. Show that wisdom and repent if you are in the midst of those spirits. Um, to where you don't miss out on the kingdom. You never know. We never know when we're going to press that dying pillow, man. We don't know. So, therefore, in order so we don't miss out on the kingdom, we must fix that usury spirit and taking advantage of brothers and sisters and fix that covetous spirit that is within us that will cause us to do those things. So, Lord's will. Uh, Y'all got something out of the class? Lord's will. Um, You go back. And if you are in the midst of that spirit, you're going to fix it with that sister or you go fix it with that brother. So that way those things are not held against you when Christ come back. So with that, uh, you got anything else? Got anything? No, sir. All oh, praise. So with that, we say shalom, most high Christ bless. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is